name's Renee, and I get to share this devotional with you today. So thanks for tuning in, taking the time. It's now been over two months since we've seen each other, since we were all thrown into this completely new season, and we all have our stories. I look forward to the time when we can share them face to face. I think it's safe to say that it's not been an easy season for any of us, challenging, maybe even intense. We've all had to adjust. It has affected us physically, and our emotions and thoughts have also been bombarded. The enemy of our souls has certainly not been in confinement. I just want to share this from Graham Cook's devotional, something I read, and I just needed to take time and read and ponder it further. The title was, Demoralization is a Strategic Attack Against Your Morale. What does demoralize mean? To lower the morale of someone, to deprive people of spirit and confidence, to throw into confusion, to divert someone from a chosen path, to cripple, to depress, to dishearten, to rattle, to undermine, to weaken. Does any of that ring true with any of you? And then there's the opposite, the Holy Spirit. He is there to cheer, to comfort, to encourage, to hearten, to inspire, to reassure, to uplift, to support. Will you partner with the Holy Spirit or empower the enemy? Your choice. So that's why I really needed to spend time pondering this because I had to make a choice. As I reflected, I was led to 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 10. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. At times we can be so aware of how frail we are as clay vessels, but may we be even more aware of who we are and who we carry in us. In this deconfinement phase, as we face new pressures, or maybe just renewed pressures. I want to end with sharing this passage from Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you have been with us on this journey, step by step, through every trial, for everything that has come against us, you were there. When we were knocked down, you were there to lift us up. When we were disheartened, there you were to cheer us up and to renew our hearts, to give us courage, to cheer us on, and I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for your love that is endless, that is always there, that never runs dry, that whatever we face, wherever we are, there your love is with us. And I thank you for that. Thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that these days matter to you, that our stories matter to you because you love us so much. I know we repeat it over and over, but I just want to encourage you to stay connected. Uh, even though we're not able to meet as a church family, I just encourage you to continue to reach out. Um, there's this YouTube page, but there's also the Facebook page, there's Instagram, and then there's also the Vineyard Brussels website. 
So I just wish you a wonderful day and continuation. May you really be strengthened in the love of the Lord in this week.